if I'm be keeping hundred with y'all, I, I got the first buyout of a five star luxury resort in the Caribbean, and that was a half a mil, right? Just a number standpoint, yeah. half a mil, um, and then another hundred k on flights to JetBlue to American, and then those things get shut off too close to the refund or partial refund date, and then I'm on the hook for $600,000, an amount of money I've never touched before, right? It's not my money. I'm just a conduit, right? Here are my friends, right. and I'm pouring it back into our economy. Mm-hmm. And now I have people on IG saying, oh, and because these companies don't give refunds, right? Because I can't tell Marriott that they're going to give me this money back. And ultimately, I do. But that takes some time because now I have to make the phone calls. Now I have to get the government involved. Now we have to have certain conversations, but those aren't overnight particularly when <laughs> that's not my formal role, right? So um, challenges is like having to meet these expectations because the expectations go from, well, these are your 30, your 50, your 100, your 200 friends that no one trusts you, but now CDE is popping, right? You got a bunch of people that don't know you. They don't, they don't know you from Tom, Dick, or Harry, and, and now it's, oh, he's a scammer, or he's a fraud. And I'm like, yeah. if you understand that I came in this game not giving, thinking about any cents, any dollars, like, there's nothing yeah. more hurtful, man. Right, so welcome to another episode of the Pepper Soup Talk Show, where we bring to the table movers and shakers in the African diaspora. We are... Blessed to have with us today Colin Williams, Mm -hmm. uh, who is the founder of Colin Devon Events. Uh, He's been doing events for a long time and uh, started uh, doing an event to Antigua, which is his native country. Um, And so we're excited to hear his story because we know that Colin came up in Antigua and in the U.S. and New York and has been in the travel and event space for a long time. And so um, we're going to let let him take it away and introduce himself. But Colin, welcome to Pepper Soup Talk. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Uh, Gentlemen, really appreciate you having me on on the show today. Uh, My name is Dr. Colin Williams. I am the CEO of CDE. Uh, travel entrepreneur, ambassador to the island of Antigua based on tourism, specifically uh, DEI expert, facilitator, speaker, author, et cetera. Uh, wear a lot of hats, but at the end of the day, um, I'm really trying to diversify and make the world a more inclusive space, whether that be through my day job as a DEI expert or whether that be through the travel industry and introducing people to new countries, uh, new people, as well as new experiences. Yeah, Colin, I know you. Uh, you're a very versatile, versatile guy, and um, you mentioned like seven different uh, spaces just now, and, and so it's uh, it's not easy to keep up with you, man. Like, you, you, <laughs> you got a lot. You got a lot going on. Can, can you take us through um, just to even start, like how you um, m- are able to manage the the different um, lanes that you're in? Oh, man. Uh, I think for me, I'm someone who focuses on passion, things that really matter to me. Um, I have more so goals in a broader sense of like what I'm trying to see, how I'm trying to change the world more so than a dream job. Right. So people like, oh, here's this particular role that is going to make me happy where I'm sort of thinking, here's this thing that I'd be doing and creating impact and change in the ways that I want to. So. Um, I think for starters, I find the energy because they're things that I genuinely want to do. Um, and it's not so much about the fame or the or the money as much, but really sort of doing things that keep you driven, that give you the energy to keep going. Um, I'd also say growing up first generation American, um, I had to hustle academically to get anything right. So my parents came to this country in 87 pregnant with me, no bread, sleeping on couches and floors of family members' homes. And for them, education was the only currency that could make a difference. So I was always in after-school programs, reading extra books, looking at cousins, things, right? So like always sort of forced to be hustling um, because education would really open up the door for me. Um, And then in particular, it was when I got to college, you know, guys like y'all, 
um, where I started creating spaces for folks to have social experiences to go along with their sort of elite Ivy League institutional experiences um, and, and really use that as a way to build community, um, a community that lasts, that extends, um, and, and that continues to grow. It's cool. Thank you for sharing yeah. that with us. Um, mm -hmm. And then just uh, to build on what Akiz was saying, Colin, so the uh, concept behind our show is to, to bring someone like you who with a great business idea and being able to convert that idea into reality. Uh, so a lot of our audience is like, you know, someone out there with an idea by just hearing your exp uh, like experience. Can um, you talk a lot about like, creating this social space and creating a community, how did you come up to not, come up with an idea about, you know, your travel uh, business and how did you make that happen? And what, what is it today and what's your long-term goal for this sort of a uh, company right now? Okay, you hit me with like four or five amazing questions. Yeah, I, 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 I think it was no, no, that was good. Take it time, that was good. Let me, uh, let me try to run through that. So um, I think, one for me, and going back to what I said before about like going with passion and ultimate goal, um, the CDE travel stuff didn't start as business. It wasn't something I was doing to create money or revenue. Um, it was literally to enjoy life to its fullest potential. Um, even the events that I started doing back in college when, you know, I got to Penn, um, being on various committees and using the social budget to just throw an event so we can have the good time right so it's like what is that hole that void that's missing and, and how do we fill that, that gap um and for me 2015 i finished my phd um and in 2011 when i finished undergrad the whole reason my parents immigrated to the u.s uh they weren't able to see me graduate um uh, they were had moved back to the caribbean they were undocumented uh and then my mom passed a month after I finished graduating in 2011, right? So um, for me, I've been working so hard my entire life and I felt like I really had to be conscientious about taking the time to applaud oneself, right? Taking the time to celebrate and enjoy what you've done because if you're always on this track, you never take a second to enjoy it. Like what happens when that track suddenly runs out? Like what, what did all those accomplishments mean? Uh, so for me, the, the business, right, it started with me taking a group of friends from the U.S. down to Antigua so that we can celebrate um, me getting my doctor, right, and, and, and sort of this, this milestone life achievement. Um, and what was supposed to be a one-time graduation getaway uh, got picked up by someone in our network, and they said, hey, can I feature you? Ended up on Time Magazine. A couple hundred thousand views later, uh, people were like, hey, what are you doing this again? Like, what, what, what can I come? And I'm like, mm, it's a one-time thing. It's a one-time thing. And it's like, well, if six, seven, 20, 30 people are asking, maybe let's, let's run this back one time, one time for the one time, right? Um, and then that went from 30 to 55 to 125, 175 to 500 in 2019. Uh, took two years off of the pandemic, just finished up about a week and a half, two weeks ago, uh, a 70 person trip back here in Antigua. Um, and I think what what really led to the, the growth and the success was ultimately it was always about the experience um, and always about leaving people with the best taste in their mouth about Antigua, right? So uh, part of growing up in New York in an ethnic enclave with a bunch of first generations, right? Whether that be from Africa, whether that be from Latin America, whether that be from the Caribbean, um, we all were some were from someplace. And I would say like, oh, where are you from? People say, where are you from? I'd say Antigua. And they'd be like, oh, is that like in DR? Or is that Antigua Bay in Jamaica? Right? And it was like, no, really, no one really knew what that was. And I always had this sense of pride, like, nah, I want to put my country on the map. So people, if you know me, you, you've heard about Antigua and you know where it is right. um, and things of that nature, right? So I, I really just worked from the first year trying to create the best experience and not making any profit, right? Because these are just my friends. Like, how do I make the cheapest possible experience as nice as possible? Um, and I sort of took that mold and continued to grow and scale it based upon what people were wanting to do, what expectations were, how things became heightened. And then as I sort of gained the resources and networks, sort of bringing people into that, right? So becoming a, a tourism ambassador, 
Um, and then having the ability for tourists to say, hey, we want to enhance your trip like this. Here is X amount to bring these folks. Here is an opportunity to create a VIP welcome in the airport. Let's get you some police escorts to the hotel to put some bells and whistles on it, right? So um, really always thinking about how do I leverage my natural, like, just lifelong relationships that exist here on the island of where I'm still at currently. Um, and then how do I package that and make it the best possible experience for my friends and their friends that way when they go to another country, right? Um, respectfully, like they always stop and think, yo, we never got treated in any place that we've been the way we got treated in NT, right? Like government officials don't come and meet us at the airport. Um, they're, they're not serving us cocktails in, in, in these restricted spaces. We don't get expedited through customs. Um, so really just always trying to think about how to maximize the experience and then let the experience and word of mouth sell itself. Right. So let's talk numbers, Colin. Like, so this is something like you say, uh, a travel agency or a travel group or company that you uh, founded, we started as with a group of friends. So tell us like how many friends you started with and how long has the company been ex in existence and like where, like how many people are actually like now like signing up to uh, take a trip to Antigua? You know, yeah, from a numbers perspective, year one was 2015, um, 27 friends. Uh, year two was 2016, 55, 2017, 125, 2018, uh, 175, 180, uh, and then 2019, right before the pandemic. Uh, we were able to take 500 people, but there was a wait list that was a couple hundred people long. Um, but there was no space in the hotel that we were staying at, nor were there, nor was there any airlift uh, because a small island like Antigua, if we get into the numbers, it's 105,000 people. 70% um, of, of our economy is, or more, is based upon tourism, right? We don't have natural exports. So people falling in love with our country is, is what we need to survive. Um, and I've just tried to do my best to keep that interest growing and building uh, year over year um, and making sure people sort of go home and again, spread the gospel that they have to check out uh, Antigua specifically uh, with Colin and his friends, but still check it out even if you have to do it at another time. All right. And so when, when did you sort of notice and felt that this, this is turning into a, some sort of a successful uh, company for you? Uh, I would say... 2019 probably was when it first became like profitable, right? Uh, I think um, the experience, the feeling, the pride, the joy of doing this for my country um, was great, but I also put in a lot of work and a lot of hours, right? Um, my day job, before I became a contractor, 60 hours a week on a, on, on, on a relatively light week, right? Um, tons of travel flying all across the country to different teams and leagues um so from a profit standpoint it was a lot of sweat equity um in the beginning um, there are a lot of things that are unofficial right so like i'm always moved around even after i get off this call i head into a local restaurant to connect with the owner right to talk about potential opportunities because everything is a all right how do we how do we make something out, out of nothing and, and take this to the next level um 2019 getting into that 500 person sort of uh, peak at the time really sort of opened a lot of eyes and had folks sort of say, okay, this is something I, I want to put some money behind. Uh, this is something I want to commit to. And that was the first year. It was like, okay, now I'm in the positive. And now it's like this singular weekend is something I'm looking at. Well, I need to find some time to scale back on my day job just because from a balance standpoint, um, it just wasn't feasible, right? 60 right, hours right. a week with a day job and then 20, 30, 40, right? Whatever, whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, and in 2019, I'm talking about managing 500 bookings. I'm talking about having 20 different influencers, thinking about security, venues, offsite, transportation, um, the, like press releases, running social. People always ask, like, who's on your team? And I'd be like, uh... I got a lot of people that help in small ways, but like, I don't even have enough bread to, to pay other people to, to build a team in that way. 
Um, so I, I'm doing a lot of that stuff and, and, and leveraging friendships and, and, and um, really just like old favors over time to, to, to make it happen. But 2019 was when um, it first became profitable. And then I would say humbly, 2020, the pandemic came, right? So at one point, I'm thinking, shifting up my, my day job and what that role looks like. And then the world shuts down and you can't do a big travel group, right? Even if you're traveling in the pandemic, it's you and a couple of friends. You're not moving around the island with 100, 200, 300 people at a time. So you you, uh, you mentioned this idea of, of it being about the experience for you. And I think that's played such a major part in mm-hmm. where uh, CD has gotten to today because um, you have that passion for it and you've been able to keep moving forward despite any sort of hiccups or or challenges that have come into play, especially even the pandemic. Like I know there are a lot of a lot of travel companies that didn't make it through the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And so with all that said, can you speak on some of the the challenges of uh, growing CDE to where it is now and um, and how you've sort of uh, been able to to navigate that? Um I would say challenges in the onset were having people believe that me as a young black man, um, I had the clientele, um, I could deliver on the things that I said I would do, right? So um, my first two years at a small black owned boutique hotel, the owner respected me, everything that she promised was there. As we outgrew the hotel, we had to use different spaces, right? Now I'm going to white owned spaces uh, because bigger and more money and cost, et cetera, and I book out a hotel and they tell me, oh, well, we didn't think that you could deliver on what you did. So we sold 20 rooms and now they have to figure out or I have to figure out how do I adjust that? How do I make this seamless without making my clients feel like I dropped the ball and adjusting for things like that? Um, I'd also say as, as, as growing happened, um, one of the reasons why I remained in Antigua was because that's where I'm from, because I have so many different levels of fixes and solutions to whatever the challenges might be, right? Um, so if a bus breaks down, I can make a phone call and have three different replacement buses just to make up for that one bus, right? If, if something goes wrong, if, if there's a scenario, like we're good with the police down here, right? Like we're, we're good with the police. So things of that nature um, are really important to have as you think about making things seamless, um, calling in for special favors. When you have a group of a certain size, most venues in Antigua don't have 500 people at a time, right? So I'm able to move around with the smaller group in certain ways, but then if I'm gonna get to that size, I have to build my own bus company, right? Literally build my own bus company because there is none that move that ever has to move 500 people mm. at the same time. Um, I would say my relationship with tourism um, has been tantamount to everything, right? Like I, I think um, during the pandemic, if I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all, I, I got the first buyout of a five-star luxury resort in the Caribbean and that was a half a mil, right? Just a number standpoint, yeah. half a mil. Uh, and then another 100K on flights to JetBlue to American, and then those things get shut off too close to the refund or partial refund date, and then I'm on the hook for $600,000, an amount of money I've never touched before, right? It's not my money. I'm just a conduit, right? Here are my friends, and I'm pouring it back into our economy. Mm -hmm. And now I have people on IG saying, oh, and because these companies don't give refunds, right? Because I can't tell Marriott that they're going to give me this money back. And ultimately I do, but that takes some time because now I have to make phone calls. Now I have to get the government involved. Now we have to have certain conversations, but those aren't overnight, particularly when (laughs) that's not my formal role, right? So um, challenges is like having to meet these expectations because the expectations go from well, these are your 30, your 50, your 100, your 200 friends that no one trusts you. But now CDE is popping, right? You got a bunch of people that don't know you. They don't, they don't know you from Tom, Dick, or Harry. And, and now it's, oh, he's a scammer or he's a fraud. And I'm like, yeah. if you understand that I came in this game not given, thinking about any cents, any dollars, like there's nothing yeah. more hurtful, man. I, I was in a, 
a deep depression <laughs> for the last couple of months, like getting emails every day, like, yeah, I need a refund. I'm, I need a cancellation. And it's just like, that's another person that I could have really showed yeah. what this trip is all about. Um, and that's why I'm also like blessed to that this last trip. Um, I had people in there that have been to Antigua with me six, seven, eight times in the past couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine it, six, seven, eight times to a country that you're not from, um, and they walking away saying it's the best trip they've ever been on, period, oh, hands down, so right? So, like, that's the, those are the ups and downs, and, like, recognizing that in business, like, you sort of have to be uh, malleable, right? Be ready to roll with the punches and, and, and those peaks and troughs, right? Because it's, it's not always going to be up. And when it's up, you got to stay on top of it. But when it's down, you also got to keep your head up and be ready for that that next step, right? So, um, yeah, so that, those, are, those are some of the things I've been going through. Right. And then with that being said, Colin, I'm going to push you a little bit here. Um, so we all know being an entrepreneur, especially uh, as a sort of a, a Black person in this space and there's just so many other travel uh, agent out there so again the, the 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 name of the game is very difficult um but our objective is always to so, like help our audiences understand like you know we have people out here who are doing it no matter the age no matter the experience like just be keep it real with us 100 like what are some of like the like key sort of key to success or path to success that you think our viewers or audience needs to know in order for them to help make their dreams come true like what are some of the lessons that you could share with us. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would say, I would say one is know your why, right? Know your why. Why are you doing something? Um, why does it drive you? What's your passion behind this? Uh, important question. If you were not going to make any money from this venture, would you still feel fulfilled, right? If you put 10, 20 years of sweat equity in and you broke even, would you still feel fulfilled? And I can say for me, with what I'm doing, like, yes, because it's not money for me. It's money for my country. It, it's, it's giving back in the best way I know how. Um, I get to put thousands of dollars in local vendors' hands annually, right? That goes for family who cooks for me. That goes for people that are throwing at events. That goes to people that are selling alcohol to setting up events, whatever that might be. So know your why. Understand um, the reasons that you do what you do. Uh, I would also say just always be ready to like to like know how to move, right? You have to know how to move because you, there's always going to be something that shifts, something that changes. Uh, the pandemic, if nothing else, right, really taught us that like all the concepts that we had around how to work and what productivity looks like and and, and what location means, right? Like that all shifted like this and. People had no control over that, right? So just be ready to anticipate and even be shift with what's unexpected, right? Um, don't try to be too steadfast because, because you never know how things are going to change. And then be authentic and, 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 and treat people right. Um, it, it's something that I just, something that I just have to do, right? I just feel like for me, in my particular story, my particular experience, there is always someone that, whether it was B or Dana at Penn, right? Whether it was Gary Simon at Prep for Prep, whether it was uh, Miss Ratnazar at Collegiate, like every institution that I've been at, every place that I've been at, um, there's always someone who's taken the time to invest in me a little bit. So I always find it important to invest in others. And when that happens, like you build these genuine connections, you build this community. Um, and then people that want to see each other win, right? And when you have that, like, that changes the game for you. So I've had literally government officials say, Colin, I, I know I know you just lost 20-something thousand because of something you couldn't control. Um, we're going to fill that void for you because we want you to keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Just like that, right? Um, so be authentic, help people out where you can. Um, don't make it all, all about the money and, and know why you're doing what you want to do because if you're creating something amazing, whether that be music, whether that be art, whether that be travel, whether that be any type of experience, right? The money's going to come. If it's amazing, the money's going to come. So focus on on, on, on the product um, and, and how people feel and, the, and, and let the dollars come after. Mm. 
That's a lot. That's a lot of wisdom. A lot of gems, man. Thanks for dropping the jam. Listen, man, we appreciate uh, your time and want to be respectful of your time too. And yeah. um, just want to say that you know we're very inspired by, by what you've done with, right. with CDE and are continuing to do. And right. and we know that our, audi- our audience appreciates all the right. the insight and and the wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning into Pepper Super Talk again. Right. Colin, we know you gotta go. Colin, we know you gotta go, but let's close out with uh, a bang or something positive. Do you have any shout out that you want to give on the show? Um, yeah, real quick, I'll just say I want to shout out the Antigua Barbuda Tourism Authority, right, for always holding me down, um, right. keeping my, my 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 head above waters when when things felt like it was time to let the game go. Um, really, just had a successful trip uh, this last time down, so. Vice Antigua, Fort James Beach Bar, Hodges Bay, Prickly Pear, Royalton, um, Jams and, and, and Zia, the whole videography team, the, the many docu-series that we have coming out uh, the next couple of weeks, uh, the BET commercials leading up that you're going to see soon, like mm. uh, everyone that's helping this dream be actualized Sweet. and like become a real thing. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you for every patron that's trusted me with the experience to, to spend your, your dollars and your coins and, and come vacation with me. Thank you so much for rocking out. Um, yeah, man, too many people to think, but just really grateful to be in this position and be able to uh, to keep li- li- living this dream. Well, Colin, we're grateful to have you on our talk show. And thank you so much again, like Aki said, for sharing your experience and wisdom with us. How can our viewers find out about uh, your company? Where can you Great know? Great question, go- man. Best place to go is go to Instagram. Instagram, Colin Devon Events, C O L L I N D E V O N E V N T S, Colin Devon Events on IG. I uh, hit the link in my bio to join the, the listserv on a stay up to date. And also, you can find me at Dr. Colin Will on IG. So feel free to reach out, hit me with any questions. Uh, thanks again for having me, guys. I'm out of here. All right, bro. Take care, Colin. Peace, man. Take care. All right.